First. Hi. Uh, we are at the booth at Do It Wi-Fi. Yeah. And you have an amazing board. I did mention, okay, it's a clipper running board, but it's not. No, no, we we, we can run clipper on uh, some of our boards, but we've uh, we developed our own firmware and uh, web UI that uh, runs directly on the hardware. Okay. It looks like clipper. That was uh, where I was catched. Um, but you run it in real time, you said. Yeah. So all motion control needs to be in real time uh, for the synchronization of the axes. So, but, and we can do that directly on, well, everyone does it directly on the board because if you lose uh, the, the synchronization, uh, it all looks terrible. <laughs> okay, and you do this for years. So before Big Tree Check and all the other guys that uh, jump on the train for this uh, one board does it all. Yeah, I mean, the RepRap community grew out of uh, Arduino and uh, you, everyone used to run ramps boards or Sanguinololu and uh, I was there back then and uh, I, I actually worked for the company that kind of started the Duet project as well. So that was uh, RepRap Pro back in 2012 or something, I can't remember, a long time ago. And um, du when the, that company finished trading, the Duet uh, boards were picked up by David, who's the lead programmer, and Tony, and uh, they've continued to develop over nearly 10 years. Uh, the firmware, uh, so we had a Duet 2, which was a long running uh, and is still going. Uh, this is, these are the newer boards, they've got a bit more power, they've got ex more expandability and uh, uh, yeah, just generally uh, uh, a more capable board. Right now we have here a 5-axis printer. How many axes can I access or um, um, control with one board? One board can pretty easily do 10 axes, that's, so that's 10 moving axes, and then you have another, uh, I think it's uh, uh, up to eight axes for extruders. But realistically, uh, those are just kind of some little limits that we put on the board. If you need more, we just talk to us and we like change it to 20. <laughs> so we could do a five axis boron? Easily. Easily. Um, and you told me, okay, you can run a boron with clipper on it, even. Uh, well, if you really want to, yeah. <laughs> what does it mean if you really? But you can run a, a Voron with uh, RepRap firmware, right? Uh, and there's, I, I, I'm pretty sure in the uh, configuration, you, you, there's a choice for Clipper and a choice for. I was going to check that on my phone actually before you started this. But, uh, <laughs> uh, there is, there is configures certainly um, for Voron and for. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Rattrick? Uh, rat, yeah, Rattrick definitely have uh, RepRap firmware configuration and um, uh, the, yeah, the other, like BLV Cube. They, yeah. there's, 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 there are communities around each of them. Yeah. So uh, yeah, there's, there's, and if, even if you then if you have problems, we've got support forum. We've got uh, people like me who uh, offer customer support on our forums. Uh, yeah, we, we can solve any problem. And now the main question, your boards are available, right? They are very available. Uh, the, the larger board is a little bit out of stock at the moment because we just uh, changed the board. Uh, it used to be a 32 volt capacity board, now we've changed it to 48 volts. We had a lot of industrial customers asking us to increase the voltage on the boards because you get more performance out of your stepper drivers for the higher voltage. So uh, the, the board in this one's actually an older board. We've got some, new, uh, some of the newer boards over there. It's just getting the stock out in the next couple of weeks so for those. For all of our other boards, uh, there's plenty of availability for the, mini, the, the smaller boards that we do, uh, the more con kind of consumer-orientated uh, one. They have uh, five uh, two-amp stepper drivers on. Uh, we are, there's also has an expansion board, so we can get up to seven-axis motors, which you need for a boron, I think. So uh, with the with the uh, with the four for uh, for the uh, for the gantry, and then uh, 
two uh, for the X runs for the bed and uh, for, sorry for the for the X and Y. So that's six and an extruder seven. So we've yeah we've got you covered. That's and cool. E and even then, even if you needed even more, we use expansion boards to extend. And what we're particularly showing here at the moment is um, open loop stepper drivers. Uh, sorry, closed loop stepper drivers, <laughs> uh, which maintain position even if the axis is interrupted. So it doesn't just go click, click, click like a normal stepper driver. It, it kind of knows where it's moved to or if it hasn't moved. And it can tell the firmware to say, oh, I, haven't done, I haven't done what I'm supposed to do. So you can stop the print straight away uh, without, uh, and then actually restart it with, without even having to home uh, directly after you've fixed your problem, like you've dropped the screwdriver in the gantry or something like that. Now, last question, how much does a board cost, let's say, for Voron with seven uh, drivers? So, our stock board is about 125 euros, that's the, the Mini 5 Plus Wi-Fi. The camera's not pointing at it, don't worry. No, no, uh, <laughs> we, will, we will blend in some B-roll. Oh, oh, that's great, and cut all out this extra chat, that's good. So, the Mini 5 Plus is 125 euros, uh, it comes in a Wi-Fi or Ethernet version. Uh, the larger board, which is much more capable, 6 amp drivers, that's uh, 230 euros. Uh, the, the, the little expansion board that goes on that, I, I can't remember, but it's like 25 euros, something like that. Uh, again, I can check on our price list. So in these times it's cheaper than a Raspberry Pi, which is not available in my Yes, price. exactly. Um, but um, uh, as I said, we can also run a Raspberry Pi on it, which gives, extends its uh, capability. Uh, so you can program. We, we kind of haven't had as many people write stuff for the Raspberry Pi because on the whole the board does everything any people need. So, so this particular machine is using, uh, it's a five axis printer machine. It's yes. based on a E3D tool changer. Um, we've added the open 5x axis Mm -hmm. which gives us two extra axes that move, uh, we, we call them the A and the B axis. One rotates uh, the bed this way and then it has a, a, a table rotation as well. Uh, this is it's all controlled by the duet and has the uh, tool boards to control the, and it has two tools as well, so each tool is controlled by tool board, simplifies the wiring back to the controller. Um, and actually, we use a tool board for, for the bed in here just to simply keep the uh, uh, wiring simple. Uh, it, slicing for a five axis machine is still quite a complex problem. Um, what we find is that you, you usually have normally sliced parts. I'll come back in. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that, so, you can start off with it. Don't look how bad this print is as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll point this side to camera. So, <laughs> no problem. Uh, so this part is sliced reg in a normal slicer, mm -hmm. and this part is sliced in a normal slicer. Mm -hmm. These parts are, use um, full control G-code. You're not actually importing a 3D model. You are defining the tool path within the the, the tool. Um, and it's quite at the moment. It's sort of there's uh, some limitations on what you can produce, but. Basically, this is a vase print um, as, as the A or B axis is moving. So, to, to, so you're still printing in X and Y, but the, the part is moving underneath to create the, 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 the sort of five axis shape. Which enables to print without support. Enables printing specific objects without support. It's still, I, I, you know, this is early days for this kind of technology and uh, it, it's finding out what the capabilities are, what's what's interesting. So, so these little like uh, little rose, roses, they are they're also printed in a vase print, um, and they're probably actually more interesting to watch to print because the the whole bed is kind of moving around or like this at the time when yeah. it's being printed. And so to, to keep this, it looks fantastic. I, I I don't know why we're not running this print more often, but there we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, this this one. The other important part for this printer is the nozzle. You can see it's really long. The actual, sorry, the, other, the actual nozzle is very uh, pointy, so, so it can get in between the parts. You, we don't print the whole thing at once. We kind of print it in sections because if you imagine you printed all of this hmm? and then suddenly turned it, you're going to have nozzle collision. So we 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 
and that, if it actually it's even worse than that because you print this bit you then have to turn the bed back this way turn it around to start the next one so yeah. it's it's the actual method of control is to to, to um, build them up slowly each one and it, there's a there's going to be a lot of research into this sort of printing in the next couple of years I'm still hope of, hopeful that we can still do this stuff open source uh, there are obviously companies here who kind of do the whole reverse kinematics toolpath generation uh, but they charge you twenty thousand pounds a seat to get this we will be thrilled to see this in uh in the living room soon, hopefully. Well, we've got it at the show. We could take it home and put it in your living room as well, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. No problem. Nice to meet you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.